Yo, what's up, duelists? We got ourselves an Iron Man on our hands. I'm playing in an Iron Man right now. So round one is Souls Manic versus Sparky Flary. Then I think I'm up second and I'm on team with Souls Manic. And round three, we've got Murray and they've got Jaina and 10FD, the most recent RBET winner. So this is going to be a really stacked Iron Man. Really, really stacked Iron Man. Unfortunately, Sparky's starting off with broken Future Fusion, but fortunately he's not revealing Five God Dragon because that would be <laughs> that would be curtains. Let's be real, that would be curtains. If he just sends like Alias or whatever, then it shouldn't be too bad for Souls Manic unless Souls Manic's playing fucking Flambell. Souls Manic is one of the best players to ever grace this game. He has like insane conversion rate. Hella tops, all that shit. He didn't even send Alias. Bruh doesn't even have Hero Blast. SMH. SMH. Oh, he might already have Skyscraper. That's why he sent the Captain Gold. That makes sense. Well, it doesn't really make sense, but... You know, he's not on our team, so... Obviously, his moves, they're a little bit... A little bit weaker than Team Murray. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. So, Sparky Flare, he looks like he's playing Hero Beat. Looks like he's got the Future Fusion. He's got a Absolute Zero on the way. However, Stratos being in play, if Souls Manic is playing Flamvels, we might see something good here. We might see something nice and juicy. A Fire Dog activation would be... Mm, would be... What the fuck is this? Set 3? Future Fusion Stratos set 3? Okay, Cyber Dragon's great. Cyber Dragon's actually really good. It's a good way to start this off. Good way to start this off. Okay. Okay. I see you. I see you with the uh, counter offense of Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon's pretty high value here. Actually, I might have. If he has Fire Dog, I might have led on Fire Dog, actually. Because Fire Dog will demand an answer, and Cyber Dragon will be good enough to beat the remaining cards that you know about, like Alias and whatnot. But maybe, maybe you don't go for the Fire Dog. I think Souls is in kind of an awkward spot here, where if he has something like a Caius, or he has something like like another normal summon, you can't really play it. You kind of just have to attack with the Cyber Dragon. It's going to trade with the D-Prison, but at least you didn't burn your normal summon. So, eh, could have been worse. Set Monster could be a Spy, could be a Raikou, could be a Hamster, could be a Snowman Eater. I know Souls Manic likes Snowman Eater a lot in Flanville. I like Snowman Eater too in that deck. I think it's pretty good. Although it doesn't let you make level 8s like Spy does, it's just better. <laughs> it's just a better card than Spy because it just pops the monster. Here comes the alias. We'll see if there's a spark. There might be a spark fitting his username, Sparky Flary. No. It's just going to be attack. It's going to be Raikou targeting the back row. He says future fusion is not a problem. And he's going to mill a fire dog. So he is on Flambell. He is playing compulsory. Ooh, this is going to be a this is going to be a juicy match. Looks like Souls is just trying to press through the back row. I wonder what he has in order to get through this. He just needs to fight through one more back row here. Just one more back row he needs to fight through. Then, of course, he's going to have to deal with the future fusion. Obviously, that's going to suck, but... Okay, maybe he was trying to pop the back row and hit a Starlight Road because he has a Torrential? I could see that. I could see a Torrential coming out here. Because he didn't, he didn't play another monster. But there's a good chance he just doesn't have another monster. Nope. There's a Torrential. Hopefully no Starlight. Big thing from Sparky. Does he have Solemn? Oh, he has Starlight. Yeah, there's the Starlight. Uh, all right. Yeah, he got 50-50. That's really ugly. That's really, really ugly. This game's over. There's no coming back. He had to hit the Starlight with the Ryko. Dang, that's so lame. <laughs> He just hit the wrong back row. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. But, alas, here we are. I don't know how he gets back into this. It has to be like... Hmm. Compulsory D-Prison. Either one of these attacks is lethal. There's D-Prison for the absolute zero. Okay. That works. Here comes Stardust. Here's another D-Prison. Book of Moon. Okay. Booking the Stardust instead of the Absolute Zero is, you know, it's something. It's something. It makes more sense, I suppose. Yeah. The Stardust still won't remember that it was not properly Synchro Summoned. It still still basically knows that it's it's not going to come back in the end phase if the effect gets activated somehow. 
Here's Thunder King, run over the Stratos. I think you're pretty much just boned at this point, though. Like, he has three cards in hand he hasn't played. An alias kills you here. Like, so much kills you here. You're just down so fucking bad. You don't have an out to the Strato or the Stardust because you didn't you didn't flip it last turn. Your last card must be, like, another Book of Moon, or you're just willing to take this L here. Here comes Stardust Swing. Is that another book? It is. Okay, so you have another turn. You have another turn. It's not a great spot to be in, but I think you just alias crash if you're Sparky because you don't want you don't want souls to be able to put anything together. Okay, he has honest too. My goodness, that's gonna be gross. That's gonna be gross. I'm surprised he didn't actually summon another monster. Maybe he doesn't have another monster. Who fucking knows? Game's over. We're going to game two. We're going to game two, ladies and gentlemen. I better start prepping my my vibes. I was planning on playing Ancient Gear. I was planning on playing Ancient Gear, but I don't know. Ancient Gear might get beat the fuck up by this deck. Okay. Okay, he topped a D prison. A little bit late, but he did top a D prison. Main deck Kaiku. Not the best in this position when you're down six cards. But do what you can. Do what you can. Down six cards and 7,000 life points. Kind of tough. Kind of tough for the Flamvel deck. That's why I don't like the Flamvel deck. It's really hard to gain micro advantage if you just have the wrong back row or if you just snipe the wrong card. You, you really can't get micro advantage with this deck. It just doesn't line up very well. It's going to pop there. It's going to mill three. Another rekindling gone. Uh, that's a big payoff. That's no longer there anymore. Going to draw and set another card. Potentially Snowman Eater could, could do some things, but... I think at this point it's it's curtains. Yep. Okay, cool. We're going to the next game. Going to the next one. All he has to do is attack with the guy and then... Yep. Game two. I don't really like Soul's Manic's chances. I think the Hero Beat deck is basically the Flamvel deck, but better. Because Miracle Fusion is a better rekindling. And... Um, Stratos exists, so they have a good opening play. Like they have a good proactive play. Granted, Stratos is bad if the opponent does have Fire Dog, but as we saw in the last game, I mean, he just didn't have Fire Dog, so it doesn't matter. Like if you don't have Fire Dog when he has the Stratos, then then it doesn't matter. You can just fade Fire Dog and be fine. And then on top of that, you can just like set a trap card <laughs> and be fine. So it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough one for for Souls Manic to play play on through i think i think this matchup is probably very bad because the hero beat is just doing what the flamvel deck does but it does it a little bit better in my opinion um there are some tools there are some tools i think if souls manic has you know snowman eater if he has gravekeeper spy those are two of the best cards for this matchup if he has you know the right back row at the right moments i think book of moon is not very good in this matchup you already kind of just kill their dudes regardless so i think you don't really want book of moon but maybe you do. I don't know. I also don't really love Cyber Dragon in this matchup. But maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Souls getting to go first is huge here and not having to stare down a future fusion. And having Thunder King. Okay, so this is big. This is really, really big. He needed something like this. If Sparky doesn't have a way to get over this Thunder King, then this is going to shut off all three E-Calls. Rota, Captain Gold, Stratos, Search. At least six cards. Okay, that gets over the Thunder King. We'll see from Souls if he wants to negate this with Thunder King. Generally speaking, you do. Um, unless your back row stops Cyber Dragon. Generally speaking, you do. Because if they lead on Cyber Dragon, instead of back row removal, it means they don't have back row removal. They're going to attack, and there's the deep prison. Okay, perfect. That was dangerous, because if he had Alias, he would be trading the Alias with the Thunder King, getting the Alias in the graveyard... And that's, that's worse. He did have Alias, he just didn't summon it first. How interesting. How interesting. Hmm. I probably would have summoned the Alias there. Honestly. Hmm. Alas, here we are. So if Thunder King swings, then you kind of get beat the fuck out by a lot of different things. But maybe you just want to get the Alias out of play? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm going to play. I'm thinking I want to play a machine deck, but 
against the dude with main deck cyber dragons it might be really silly maybe i'll just bring fairy Ooh, that'd be kind of fun but then i'm preying do i want to pre i don't really want to pre i just kind of want to play what i was planning on playing which was ancient gear who knows things don't actually look that good for souls manic <laughs> Which is crazy, because he's up a card, and he has the stun monster in play, and he's up tempo too. But, like, I just don't like this position for his deck. He's going to go anything on Declaration. He might try for a Book of Moon play. This is going to get him absolutely fucking bodied. Okay, Crash. Damage Calc Honest. Wow, he really had two whole-ass outs to Thunder King. Impressive. Now it's pretty bad, because if Souls Manic sets any back row that's not like bottomless or torrential, then Summon Stratos can pop the back row, and then just all of a sudden you're in a really, really bad spot. Yeah, this is a tough one. This is definitely a tough one for Souls Manic. I don't know how he's coming out on top here. He needs to have something cash money himself. He needs to have a defensive play, like a Raikou or something like that. Maybe a spy would be it would be clutch here. I have a feeling spy would be clutch. I wonder what Murray's gonna bring. He's probably gonna bring Glads. I could see that. This hero beat deck is is really annoying to face. I, I don't like facing against it. With most decks. I don't mind it with fairies, but yeah, it's just a it's just a tough one to beat. No pun intended. It's so aggressive. I might just play Quick Draw, actually. I feel like Quick Draw's fine. Or I could play Frogs. I feel like Frogs is good. This is all assuming Souls Manic loses. I don't know if he's going to lose. Here's the Stratos. Yeah, so he did have the Rota. He did have the Stratos. Here's the Raikou. This is going to pop the back row 1 million percent of the time. You clear the back row always with this deck because your power plays are usually better than your opponent's. And your mills, dude, his mills have been so bad. He's milled rekindling every single time he's milled. He's, re he's milled rekindling more frequently than he's milled a flamvel monster. That's so unlucky, dude. That's so unlucky. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't see what he searched with Stratos. It must have been Ocean or something. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably just bring Ancient Gear, because that's what I was planning on bringing. I like Ancient Gear. That deck makes me happy. That deck makes me smile. I need to look up the Gear Town rulings, though. We'll pull that up in a bit. Pull that up in a second. I need to see if he activates his thing. Um, oh, I still have the overlay for After Hours. Fuck. <laughs> uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Ooh, it's right there. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I need to... Oh, I'm losing my train of thought. Here comes Sidrakaius. Okay, this is big. Big if true. You go after the Stratos here, I think. Always. Unless you go after the back row. No, maybe you don't. Maybe you go after Alias. I feel like, so, if it's Spark, they would wait for the attack from the Cyber Dragon. So, you don't really need to attack. You don't really need to target the back row of the Alias. Or you don't really want to target the back row of the Alias. I think banishing the Stratos is the best play here. It's either banish the Stratos or banish the back row and hope it's like another Deep Prison or Mirror Force. Or banish the Alias and hope the back row is a Hero Blast. He's going to make the safe play and go after the Stratos. I like this play. I think this is the play that loses to the least, so I would go for this play. He can now choose whether or not he wants to attack. I think you do attack. Again, I think you just want to clear the... Clear the back row. You are under a shitload of life pressure, but you don't really have a choice. Maybe you can leave it up. Maybe you can leave it up. If you know that they have another alias in hand, you're basically forcing them to have an out to the Caius, but any e-call is an out because it just grabs Captain Gold, and that can grab Skyscraper. So Souls needs a trap card here, like a real trap card. Yeah. He doesn't have to attack. Okay, as long as he doesn't attack here, then he's fine. As long as those trap cards are real and he doesn't attack there, it's fine. He thought a long time before setting those two, so maybe one of them's a bluff. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe one of the set cards is a bluff. He'll be forced to spark the Kaias or whatever if he has it. He's going to attack, signifying a second Honest or a Book of Moon. 
declaration. Okay, so here comes book or spark. Oh, he's going to book. Okay, so he has book. He doesn't have honest. Souls could could have done something there if he had his own book. 2D prison's gone. Hmm. Not a good spot for Souls Manic. I don't even know if that Caius was the best play. I guess if you have extra Caius that's locked up in your hand, and you just need to get them into play somehow. This is a big thonk moment. We didn't see Sparky commit anything further to the board. Souls Manic being a little bit passive, not playing any sort of removal spell on this alias. I think it's kind of a tell, because he didn't commit anything else, that his back row, that Sparky's back row, is real. It is not a Starlight Road. Because if it was a Starlight Road, he would have summoned another monster. Like, without a doubt. Hmm. Yep, there's the second alias. Okay, maybe he drew a Spark now. Think on summon. If he goes Torrential, he takes his two for two. Uh, he also just gets... I mean, like... It would be an insane bluff, or not bluff, but it would be insane if Sparky's back row is Starlight Road, and he, it was a bluff all along. He's going to say okay here. Interesting. Flamvel Magician. Part of the weak parts of the Flamvel deck is you have to play Flamvel Magician. It's a pretty bad card. Maybe one of Soul's Manic's set cards is Rekindling. Here's Cyber Dragon, number two. That's a big one. That's a big one. Here comes Breaker. Okay. Breaker at least does something here. Take the plus one. Pop the back row. It says Tang Sidros. Cyber Dragon, really good here. Oh, picked off Hero Blast before there was a hero down. And now a rekindling. Okay, yeah, one of his sets was a rekindling. We kind of saw that coming. At this point in time, you can make Stardust and just say you don't have another Honest. Or you can make Colossal and say if you do have an Honest, okay, you have an Honest. But at the very least, I retain my board presence. I think Stardust is not as good as Colossal. You know what Thought Ruler might actually be the play? If you're going to say you don't have Honest, you might want to get a Thought Ruler down and try to gain some life because one of the ways you're losing is like, yeah, I don't love this unless your back row is real. Hmm. If the back row is real, this is good. But if the back row is not real, then you're you're playing with fire here. No pun intended. Fire 200. Because if, if the back row is real, then... Oh, just a pass. Is that a gores? Is that signifying a gores? I guess you're passing if you have miracle, but if he had miracle, why would he not? Why would he not set up for it all? Hmm. Questionable stuff. He does have gores. Yeah, I knew he had something, some sort of trick here. Run over the token, dropping the gores early to preserve life. I don't hate that play. It's just gonna be. A little difficult. I think Soul's Manic back row is bottomless trap hole. So I think playing into this Gores was maybe not the best choice. This E-Call can get Captain Gold. Or it can get Ocean to turn on Miracle Fusion, which isn't bad. Miracle Fusion here at least gives you two very real threats that kill Stardust. Because like Absolute Zero can crash with Stardust and that's devastating. But just grabbing another alias. Interesting. Maybe he does have a spark. I don't fucking know. Summon here. This should get bottomless. If he has bottomless, he should do it now. Because it'll at least let him preserve his stardust another turn. Yep, there it is. Yeah, I knew his back row was bottomless because he didn't spend it on the alias earlier. Um... Yeah, he's going to lose his Stardust here, which sucks. It sucks pretty bad, actually. 
I don't know if there's anything that really gets... What? Why would you not attack the Stardust? I guess he's cutting him off of Synchro plays, but... That's kind of wild. Hmm. Let's see if Soul's Manic topped his Mirror Force. I think he's out all his D-Prisons. Both D-Prisons are gone. I'm sure he doesn't play a third. If he drew something like Compulse, that'd also be really funny, too. That'd be really funny. Oh, man. Oh, man. Dark Bribe. Okay. Mm, kind of sucks, but you'll take plus ones where you can get them. Especially card draw plus ones. You need to get out of this top decking situation you're in. Like, you basically just need time, and you need draws, and you don't really have them. Okay, Breaker can pop the last back row. Heavy Storm, wow. He was sandbagging it. That's, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. He almost got him with the Pro Heavy. Breaker looking really good here. Double Breaker Compulse? I like that configuration. Just not in this deck. <laughs> not in this deck. Is there a defensive trap? No, wow. Wow, that's crazy. Things don't look good for souls. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, shit. He had Torrential. What a bait. What a bait. Sets back row passes. That could be a Hero Blast. That would be a devastating back row at this point. Hero Blast would be a crushing back row. Most defensive traps here are pretty crushing, actually. Most of them are. Rekindling, not even a good draw because it trades with every trap card in the game. So I think his best draw is actually like a Ryko or a Breaker. And then you have to hope that the back row is... Oh, yeah, that's going to be the game. Damn, dude. Like I said, their deck just does what your deck does, but better. Uh, very unfortunate loss, but that means I'm up next, so... Gotta go grab my deck. I think I'm just gonna play Ancient Gear. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it too much. I think in the sideboard, I want... I can't remember what I was citing in this, but um, I have 14 cards in my side deck, so I need to add a 15th card. Probably just... I don't know, DD Crow. Probably get two DD Crows in over the jar. Seems good. Let's run it up. I'm not going to switch up just because I know what my opponent's playing. That'd be bitch made. That'd be bitch made. Oh, I'm just like defaulting. All right. Hosting for Sparky. Then we play. Nice. This should be fun. This should be fun. This should be fun. I haven't played this matchup, so should be fun. All right, good luck, have fun. I didn't see what he picked in the last rock, paper, scissors, but looks like we're going first, hell yeah. Hell yeah. No turn one future fusion for you, motherfucker. Just kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. Actually, this hand is, ooh, this hand is good. This hand is kind of good. Hmm. So I think we can play this kind of passively. We can just like set Peacekeeper, set Typhoon in case he has Future Fusion. And then we'll pass. If he goes Strato Search, then he attacks into Peacekeeper. That's good for us. We search Gear Frame and then we're all good. This is a pretty solid hand. Here's Sonic Bird. Interesting. Looks like we're playing against a Ritual deck. Hopefully it's not like Relinquished or something, or maybe that's not bad for us. Advanced Ritual Art. Okay. Huh. We should have a good matchup against like any sort of demise strategy, I should say. We're gonna go grab Gear Frame. Yeah, any sort of demise strategy should be okay for us. We just have to be careful about our positioning. Multiple setback row. Interesting. Well, we start off with the obvious one, which is gear frame search. 
and this is going to be able to apply pressure. We'll grab Machina Fortress. We don't actually need to pull the trigger on anything quite yet. We're just going to attack the bird. I need to get him pretty low, basically. Advanced Ritual Art. Hmm. We could set a Book of Moon to keep our life total kind of high in case he goes for like a Gear Town pop as well. We're going to want to book the Demise. All right, I'll set one Book of Moon. We have a second one, and I think this is going to come down to a life race, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think this matchup is going to come down to a life race, if it is Demise. And if it is Demise... Next turn, I'm looking at a Sonic Bird gets summoned, sure. Does he have another target? That's interesting. Sure. He can search for a ritual spell, but Sonic Bird doesn't get over gear frame, so that's fine. Contract with the Abyss. Yeah, it looks like this is some type of demise OTK strategy, which is fine. I'm cool with that. Okay, just going to pass the turn. Okay, we drew Compulsory. Not the worst against Demise, I will say. Not the worst. I think at this point in time, I want to start getting a little bit more aggressive. So, we're going to Space Typhoon one of his back row. I want to see what he's working with here. It was a set trade-in. Wow, okay. That's crazy. We'll activate Gear Town. Normal summon Ancient Gear Beast. Go battle phase. Attack with the Gear Beast. For 600 over the Sonic Bird. We know he has Contract, Advanced Ritual Art, 3 Unknown. So he's going to take 600 and then possibly 1800 from the Gear Frame. Looks like we're lagging a little bit. Okay, while I'm while I'm lagging, I'm formulating my game plan. Okay, I need to get in this 18. I can s s sort of equip gear frame. That doesn't really matter, because whatever blows up one of them will blow up the other one. But at least... No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just set compulse and then I pass. Yeah. Yeah, I just set Compulse and then I pass. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go... If he demises us, basically, we're going to go chain... Chain Compulsory, target the gear frame, return to my hand. And then if he goes for the... Um, if he goes for the field nuke, we'll chain Book of Moon, and then we'll be able to get Gear Dragon from our deck. Advanced Ritual Art. So here's Advanced Ritual Art. That's okay. This is going to be for the field nuke. If he's going for Garlandolf, actually, this might be Gaia. So he might go for Garlandolf, which is interesting. Okay, it looks like he is going for Demise. I'll ask him, what the fuck is this? Hold up. Once per turn, you can roll one six-sided dice. Then to destroy all monsters your opponent controls if you roll one or two, destroy one monster your opponent controls if you roll three, four or five, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. I don't think we care about this so much. We know he has contract, so he has three other cards that I don't really care about. This guy's okay. This guy's okay. I don't care about this. Mm. If he just attacks me, I, I might book him. Oh, he's going to activate it. Not sure. Interesting. Dark Master Zork. This card's cool. Hold a four. Destroy one monster. Three, four, or five. So this just destroys my monster. That's okay. I'm cool with that. I think I'm cool with that. I don't know. Here comes Beta, the Magna Warrior. Okay. Um, Dark Calling. Okay. 
So here he's going to banish his two cards. We have Book of Moon for the Gaia. Because he's not using like Dark Fusion or anything. I don't know if Dark Fusion even prevents Book of Moon. But we have Book of Moon for the Gaia. And he hesitated there, which means he has a rock monster in his hand, which is good. 3600, question mark. Okay. So this isn't actually lethal damage. It's not actually lethal damage. I mean, I'm going to book the Dark Gaia for sure. The set card's got to be the Contract Bluff. Because his last card, I think, is a rock monster. Yep, okay. So there's a blind allure for no real reason whatsoever. Uh, we know the last card is contract, so we just have to put together something that kills this. Which I think everything we do kills this, right? We can take 17. We'll take 27. He'll attack with the Dark Gaia. We'll book a moon. There goes the Dark Gaia. Okay, cool. Mausoleum. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. That's really, really good. Okay, so we've got Gear Frame. Activate. That means we're beating his whole board this turn. Go get Fortress. We're going to use uh, the field spell here. Go get Gear Dragon. We're going to go Pitch Fortress, Special Fortress. We're going to go Battle Phase. Um, the most damage is to go Gear Frame here, Gadgeltron here for 300 and then fortress here so it's 300 then 800 and then main phase two we are going to set just book of moon i think i don't think we need to equip although it man he said this isn't over yet i mean i don't think there's a single top deck he could have that beats book of moon is there a single top deck he could have that beats book of moon here we know the last card is Contract. If we want to, we can equip, and I think it's just a little bit better to equip to the Gear Dragon. It could be wrong, but I think it's just a little bit better to not have a weak monster out. It's It, it doesn't really matter, um, but, you know, whatever he top decks here, this is fine. We have another Book of Moon, so we're good to go. We're good to go. Dude, Compulsory was so good. Holy shit. We had a really good draw this game. So he summons the Dark Gaia. This is going to be 4,400. This doesn't win the game. He attacks here. It's 14. Uh, it doesn't even matter. We're just going to book it and then kill him. Battle phase, Book of Moon, and we're going to the next game. Cool. All right, this matchup seems fucking hard. I'm not going to lie, it seems fucking hard. It seems really difficult. That being the case, we have some tools. Not the best tools, but some tools. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. I can already tell. It's going to be a damage race. Damage race situation. Fossil Dino's not bad either. Actually, Fossil Dino's pretty fucking good here. Hmm. Alright. Heavy Storm is good. Limiter's good. The books were incredible. Starlight Road seems a little bit questionable. The only way they have to trigger it is, I guess Demise triggers it. Yeah, I guess Demise triggers it, so that's probably fine. I think Solemn Judgment is a little too sus, but maybe not. 
since we're going to be the aggressors, I'm going to cut Megamorph. I think I'm going to trim an Ancient Gear Beast and an Ancient Gear Golem. Although Ancient Gear Beast is pretty quick pressure. I mean, he, he put a lot of pressure on the opponent last game. Hmm. There's a chance we don't want, like, the Dust Tornadoes or whatever, but... I think they're pretty important at keeping Decree out of play. Although we have a pretty decent setup against Decree already. If Dust Tornado is better than our Solemn... Hmm. It's just a matter of, like, do we want this shit or not? Do we want Mirror Force or not? I think Mirror Force might be kind of sus. Maybe Soul Release isn't good enough. Here, maybe it's too slow. Okay, we can try the DD Crows and the Fossil Dinos, and we'll try one Dust Tornado. We're going first, so... Maybe Royal Decree is too punishing against us. Maybe we want Giant Trunade, actually. Hmm. I haven't really thought this matchup through. Skill Drain's interesting. It should shut off Gaia pretty easily. This is a very interesting matchup, to say the least. We're going second, so Dust Shoot's probably bad. Man. All of this stuff isn't bad. It's not bad. I think we're going to try this. This might be crazy, but it seems okay. And we can maybe try Thunder Kings, but I like our ability to search a little bit more than I like theirs. I think it's a little bit better. And as long as we have, like, Book of Moon and shit, we should be okay. As long as we have, like, our, our few defensive things, we should be good. This hand has Promise. If we draw another Field Spell, we can just get a turn 2 kill. But... Mm, might be tough if he puts up a fight. Sonic Bird is annoying. Last game we had the Peacekeeper too. The one Peacekeeper doing a lot of work, finding us the card we need to need to have, basically. Hmm. Setting a back row, that could be his decree. Here's Dinah. Okay. That being the case. Huh. Man, it's really slow to like set Peacekeeper, set Compulsory, and like try that kind of shit. But doing the other stuff is pretty all in. And it exposes our Dinah to like normal summon fucking Beta the Magnet Warrior or whatever. I think it's best to just see what his back row is going to be. So we're going to T-set and we're going to pass. We're going to play a little slow. It might not work out for us. He might have the turn 2 kill. He didn't play any draw spells last turn, so... That's a pretty scary sign, to say the least. We have Compulsory to chain to something, but... If his back row is Decree, he can just wait till we use the Compulse and then chain to it. Thinking. Interesting. Hmm. It's interesting that Zork plus Beta plus the the standard setup on his Advanced Ritual Art Dark Calling is is what it was. Okay, here comes Advanced Ritual Art. That's going to be okay. If he summons Demise, I will try to compulse the Demise if he priority activates. So priority question mark this should work out well for us yeah okay so he's gonna pay 2,000 chain compulsory target demise Hopefully this cuts him off lethal. And now we're going to lose our shit, but we're going to be able to go search gear frame. Okay. If he just has to pass the turn here, then we game shot him. 
I believe. No, we don't because we can't get Dyna and Fortress and whatever down at the same time. There's the beta. This is kind of what I wanted to initiate. Here's Dark Calling. Okay. Yeah, that's ugly. Okay, that's pretty bad. We're going to take a shitload here. We're going to take like 50 billion damage, but this isn't this isn't game. What matters is that this isn't game. This is 5,300. If he has another Dark Calling, he can put another 24 in play, but it's still not game. It does limit our options, but... So this is 3,600. Okay, so we know he has Demise and two Unknowns. All right, Gear Town, Gear Town, Gear Town, Gear Town. Does that kill him? So he's at 6,000. That'll be 24 there. And 33 there. Yeah, I think Gear Town kills him. As long as he doesn't have Trag. He has to have specifically Trag to survive this. So, we're going to try it. Let me just run the numbers one more time. 5,000 over this is 33. And then... Gear Dragon over this is twice. Yeah, this is super lethal. This is super game. Activate. Go get the Fortress. We'll go Gear Town. Gear Town. Go get the Dragon. And then we'll go Fortress. Special Fortress. And then we've got Limiter for game, so... We go attack here first limiter damage step so it's 3300 and then 2400 and then yeah this is game if he doesn't have a fader or track basically uh, 3300 damage from this attack and then this attacks here, he takes 24, he drops to 3, drops to 300, and then attack directly for a billion. Nice. Nice! GG's. GG's. That was a cool deck. I like this with the normal monsters. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. It's kind of what I was doing with Garland off, but a little bit more coordinated, I think, going for Demise. All right, next up, I've got to play against, I think, J Jaina? I'm not sure. Um, who's next? Who's next? Texting in the Discord right now. That was a good game. That was a good game. Hmm. Hold, everyone. Hold. Hold. Reflecting on the deck. Seems good. Deck seems strong. Looks like I'm playing against Jaina. Next. Cool. I've got Ancient Gear. I could bring this deck again, or I could switch it up and bring a different deck. Against Jaina... Mm. Jaina likes to play. I'm not sure what Jaina likes to play. I haven't played against Jaina in a while. I might just run it back. I mean, the deck felt really strong. Yeah, it didn't feel like it had a lot of holes in the strategy. Hmm. Then again, we were playing against someone who didn't really have like a lot of interaction. Playing against decks that are heavy interaction might be frustrating, like Ryko decks or whatnot. I think we can switch it up and try something a little bit slower. Maybe we try to quick draw, go for the quick draw game. I like quick draw a lot, actually. I've been playing it a lot lately. I feel like after that game, I kind of want to slow things down a bit. Maybe I could bring the telekinetic deck. Ooh, that sounds good. That's not exactly slowing things down, but... Eh, it seems pretty good here. 
All right, let's try the telekinetic deck. Let's try this. Power well. Getting some fan favorites. Getting some fan favorites. Power well and ancient gear and whatever else. Hmm. Looks like we're waiting. Looks like we're waiting until Jane is ready. So I suppose I could take uh, the Power Well deck, or I could take the Ancient Gear deck. Both of those seem good. They both seem kind of fast. I know Jaina's played Fairies and Quick Draw in the past. I'm not exactly certain what I would want to bring against those two decks in the dark. Because those decks cover a lot of the field. I guess Frogs could be okay, or like Quick Draw could be okay. Because Quick Draw Mirror, I'm confident in my abilities in winning a Quick Draw Mirror. And then I'm also like confident in my abilities in like beating Fairy with Quick Draw because I think that's a pretty good matchup for Quick Draw. So maybe I should just bring Quick Draw. Hmm. Telekinetic sounds very fun, but all right, fuck it. We're bringing Telekinetic. Good luck, have fun. Okay, against Jaina, I'll just pick Rock again. You know what? I'm just gonna pick pick Rock again. Rock three X, dude. Rock three X. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. All right, if I can get one win, then I did I did my team justice. I did Team Murray justice. This hand sucks. Holy shit. Okay, now it's not so bad. What's the move? Damn, what's the move? The move might just be to pass. I don't want to get hit with a fucking Spirit Reaper or Air Bellum or something. We could Armageddon send something, but like... I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to get too crazy. Summoning Armageddon into an open board is actually kind of risky. Like, if they have a Tomato or, like, a Shining Angel or something, it's pretty bad. So, I think we can just wait until we have a play, more or less. Our hand's really fucking good. It just needs that extra little, extra little something. Back row? Okay couple of back row okay that's a good draw that's a good draw okay we're gonna go Krebin's attack Krebin's attack is good getting that early poke is huge if the Krebin's dies I mean like I'm super happy for that it's gonna demand a resource here if it doesn't die let's say she just sets or summons a monster oh my god it's fucking over dude it is fucking over. We have fucking broken mind control. It's over. It's over. It's over. Flipping to check. It's dupe frog. We're going to flip summon. Anything on summon. She could have torrential here. That would be annoying, but then I think we can go for game. And if she doesn't have that, then we can just go Armory Arm. Which I don't have. Oops. Darn. That's a deck building error. I should have our Armory Arm in this deck. Alas, here we are. Okay. Um, that being the case... I think we summon Armageddon Knight, and then we go Thought Ruler. Now that might be bad, because Armageddon Knight's going to send a Dark. We can go Stardust Dark Armed. I think that's better. So we'll go Armageddon Knight, we'll go Activate. She could have a Wind Blast here. I'm not sure what she'd want to Wind Blast. She could Wind Blast the Tuner. I know these stupid frog decks like to play wind blast and stuff. Summon and effect good. Okay. So at this point in time, we're just going to send another Krebins because we have power well. It's either that or we send Goblin Zombie because we have Krebins in circulation. Hmm. It could also be send Plague. This is all interesting stuff. I'll just send Goblin Zombie. Wait, how are we playing the next few turns? Let's see. If, we're, if we make Stardust, 
We special dark armed. We go pop pop. Hold up. I think here. If we send Goblin Zombie, we're only we're only gonna have one card we want to banish here, depending on what we send. So I don't even know if it's like right to even go for fucking the guy. I think it's better to just send Goblin and then go start us straight up and then start attacking. Or actually, Thought Ruler. Yeah, I kind of like Thought Ruler. Question mark. Yep. Okay. Nice. We'll go 27 direct. So one of the few ways this deck can deal with Thought Ruler is Caius. So we'll have three darks for dark armed after all that. Then we'll be able to pop the back row and then go for the OTK with power well and book of life and brain control, ideally. Uh, that's, that's something, isn't it? This deck is insane. <laughs> this deck is fucking crazy. All right. Let's just send again. Don't really have any reason to just do anything quite yet. <laughs> I don't I don't think we're really in a rush. <laughs> Substitute, oh okay. Two back row in a frog deck? What? That doesn't make sense. Well there's the normal summon, so. We pretty much win, right? Like you can't, you can't do anything against Thought Ruler, right? Like, yeah, you just have to make swap in defense. Okay. At this point, we can win a million different ways. So, we're just gonna like. Oh, yes, obviously. Oops. Target the swap frog. Nice. Okay, cool. That was free. <laughs> I don't know what Jane is playing, but shit. It looks kind of bad. <laughs> if I'm going to be real, it looked like Thought Ruler kind of destroys it. We take those. All right, against frogs, I do like gores. I do also kind of like Doom Caliber, even though it's counterintuitive. I do like the DD Crows. I do like Kaiku. I like this guy. I like Skilled Rain. I like all these cards, honestly. So it really just depends. You break so hard. No kidding. Um. All right. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Book of Life is good. Um. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Heavy Storm, Space Typhoon, probably not good enough. They probably got to come out. Mystic Tomato, probably got to come out. Don't really love him in this matchup in general. We can maybe side out one Power Well, because we only need to resolve one to really win the game. Uh, Call of the Haunted, I don't love here. Return, I don't love here. Return is better overall, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of like D-Prison shit either. We'll side out one power well. We could side out the foolish. I think as it stands, like our deck is just very good here. Like it's just very, very good. Maybe we don't bring in both Doom Cows. Maybe it's just one. Maybe we don't bring in the skill grain. I don't fucking know. Hmm. What do we have? We have six out right now? Six out and we're trying to bring in seven. Is this crazy? I think Kaiku's not that necessary. If we have double crow, that should be plenty. Cause like you only need a turn, right? Like you only need a turn. You just crow banish the guy. I like Kaiku for bringing in the doom cows, but I'm not sure we're bringing in the doom cows. Also, I'm not sure if we're bringing in return. If we're playing return here, I don't think we need it. I think we just beat this deck regardless. 
She should have wind blasted the Armageddon Knight if she had a chance to. That would have been good, knowing we didn't have armory. I need to get armory arm in this extra deck. Maybe over a Stardust. I don't know if we need two Stardusts here. Hmm. Well, we can swap the cards as they are now. It's just a matter of, like, do we want Foolish Burial or do we want, like, Doom Caliber, that kind of thing. Maybe Well is just how we win. We have, like, a big Well turn. This is going to be a tough matchup. This is going to be a tough matchup for sure. Let's try it. Let's try it. We have Skill Drain and Doom Calibers, which I would like to get in there somehow, but I think this configuration is okay. Just because, like, even if we Skill Drain, we're going to have trouble dealing with the Monarch anyway. This hand's good. Like, if she just goes, like, Summon Swap, like, we can just Stratos, Poke. We have Rug, so we're chilling. Maybe the return is bad, yeah. Maybe the return is where we want the Doom Calibers. I could see that. Summon Swap would be super good for us. But if she has like a broken start with like one for one, that'd be a problem. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay. Uh, that means there's a Substitute, which is bad. It's not, it's not terrible, but it's not good, to say the least. Treeborn, okay. Swap, sub. She had to pitch the dupe frog to make this happen, so like that's totally chill. We have our Creebons now, okay. So the plan is to go Stratos search. Go get Malicious. Then we'll set maybe Return pulling. I think setting two plays too hard into Heavy Storm. But setting one isn't great either in case she has Unifrog. I think we'll set two. And if we get heavied, so be it. So be it. We have a DD Crow too, which is a card that we can use at some point. There's no reason to crow the Treeborn because there's two engrave. Okay, she's going to activate Substitute. Let's see if she has the Unifrog. She just has Swap Frog. Okay. I don't know why she didn't go for this the last turn. Doesn't make a lot of sense, really. Okay. Well, another pulling the rug is always good. We can just... Set Goblin Zombie and chill. We don't need to do anything this turn. Next turn we can Synchro. She's going to bring back Treeborn. That is okay. We're going to go main one. Let's see the Monarch. No, no Monarch. Okay. Weird. Um, huh. That is weird. I guess the move is Krevin's Flip Goblin Zombie. Synchro here. Make Bryonic. Goblin effect. This is going to go get us Plague, I believe. Yeah, yeah, this is just brutal. The only way she plays around all of this is if she has Crow, but I don't think she has Crow. Or something tells me she doesn't have Crow. So we know she has Swap Frog in hand. What else do we know? Nothing else, okay, shit. Well, let's pitch Malicious and just bounce the dupe. I 
And we can kill the substitute here if we want to. I have priority. Uh, do you need to do you need to BRB? Okay. Um Hmm. I think it is just like go double eight star though. Cause like stardust plus pullings should be insane. I'm gonna bounce the treeborn cause lol. I do wanna draw this Armonite, maybe. Maybe I don't actually. Special summon out the plague. Oh, she has crow. Okay. So I guess it's just single eight star then, which is fine. Mm, but what's the eight star? I guess it's stardust. Yeah, stardust double pulling is pretty good. Hmm. Is return getting better? No, not really. All right, we'll, we'll gun it. Or is it crazy to go Colossal? As Colossal beats Gores, So do we want to be Gores or do we want to beat Heavy Storm? That's what we are picking between now. I think we want to beat Heavy Storm. I think that that's better. So in the case of that, well, we lose on the spot to Gores, right? We would have to pitch to bounce the stupid Gores. All right, whatever. Um, We'll do this now. If they have gores, then at least we can audible into dark end. This has been a tricky game to navigate. They do have gores. Cute. So we can go stardust bounce the gores, but I don't love that. They're at 42. If we go Plague plus Mally, we can actually go Stardust plus Dark End, but we'd have to stack our second pulling. And she'd also have to have no Crow. So I think the best play is to go Dark End. Now, activate, pop the cores. And then we could also stack the crow. Um, that's not bad. Yeah, plague. Yeah, let's stack the crow. I don't really care about the tree more fog getting banished. It's not really changing much. But I think having double pulling now is good because we can play around certain things a little bit better. This lets us play around Storm. We're double draw locked, but this board should get us to victory. Provided we don't fuck everything up. Token is 1800. Man, this is gonna be a tough one to come back from, depending on what she has. So here's pitch for swap. Okay, we kinda knew that this was there. Set, set, okay, whatever. Um, this is just 
more time for us, so we're going to go battle phase. Bryonic against the token. Stratos run over the swap frog. Dark end attack, what I'm assuming is set dupe frog. Shield wing. Twice per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. That card is more of a liability in Grave because of Dark Simorg. Which is a card she could be playing. Hmm. Alright, we shall start us attack the Treeborn. Cool. She lets that through. So now... Uh, yeah, we just pass. I think we're okay. I don't think there's really anything that gets us here. We can't get back to Treeborn anyway. There's a dupe frog in hand, I believe. Yeah, it's just dupe. What is this shield wing? This card's wild. Nice, okay. Hmm. So we know dupe three unknowns. Back row's probably like a wind blast or something, but she's entered main one, so maybe not. I feel like she would have used it on Stardust if it was one of those types of cards. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the back row is. Maybe she was just trying to get me to use Bryonic, honestly, but I just don't really see what this could be. Okay, Solix on the Stardust, that's okay. I'm gonna summon Dark some org. Okay. That works. Can't attack, so there's that. We drew Armageddon Knight, so we can play Armageddon Knight. I don't think we really need to. Actually, you just win, don't we? Hold up. Uh, yeah, this is game. So that's 34, it's fucking lethal. Gonna chain Icarus. Weird. Think on targets, sure. You have to hit two monsters, I think. Maybe you don't have to. I think you just have to hit two monsters and then you're dying. Yep, hitting the two monsters. Then it's just summon Armageddon, activate, send Krebins to the graveyard, hit for 3,000. Uh, she didn't summon another Dark Samorg last turn, so I don't think she has another one. She could have Wind Dark to bring back Dark Samorg. Uh, I need to read this shit. You can banish one special summon this card. This card's in your graveyard. You can banish one special summon this card. Do those? Does that start a chain? Hold up. Need to Google ruling. Because it's got fucking semicolons, like it starts a chain. We're going to look this up real quick. Dark Simorg. Continuous effect. Activates and resolves. Ignition effect activates and resolves in the graveyard. Removing play one dark wind and one is a cost. If the card is not in your, it is not special summon. Okay, it activates. Well, we can just pass. We have DD Crow for the Dark Samor comeback, and then we have pulling for any monarchs, so we should be okay. There's Treeborn, that's fine. Soul Exchange, sure. Tribute Summon Cyber Dragon, okay. That's pretty good. Keeps her alive. Uh, actually, kind of causes us some trouble. Hmm. Well, 
what can we do? I think we gotta switch the Armageddon Knight and then pass. I think that's the best play. <laughs> I don't know if there's any reason to hold this or whatever. We're kind of down on resources now at this point. We need to deal 1200, which should be simple enough, but as it stands, it's not really looking that easy. Damn, turn too late on that guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we got way too many darks for that now. He's too pulling the rugs. Dude, I fucking hate pulling the rug. At least we know what our deck does, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue going into the next game. Do we set DD Crow? No. We'll just take the L. We'll just take the L if she has another Cyber Dragon. Or another monster we're summoning. Dang, that was whack. A couple of soul exchanges and looks like we're not getting out of it. Okay, we're going to activate it. Negate and destroy the Ryza. That's a tough hit. That's a tough hit. Tomato would have been good here too. Hmm. I don't think there's any one card we can draw that gets us out of this. I think we lose. I'm fairly certain we straight up lose. Um... Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, that kind of works. That kind of works. We'll take it. We'll take it. Mystical Space Typhoon on the back row. We'll chain. Discarding. Probably Trap Dust Shoot. Target the Cyber Dragon. Standby phase. Bring back Treeborn. Okay. Sacrifice for Caius, we'll activate pulling. Pass the turn. Fuck me, dude. Okay, 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 okay. We have a line, we have a line to victory. We have a couple of cards we can draw. Not a lot of great ones, but some of them get us out of this situation. Most of them do not, but some of them get us out of this situation. Brain control gets us out of this situation. Mm. Dark Refer gets us out of this situation. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. I think it is Pitch Dark Arm to Special Greffer. Sack for Caius. Caius target the set monster. Attack over the Cyber Dragon. Now, we die to a million different things, right? But I just need to fade one draw step. Prage, fade one draw step. Prage, everyone, prage! One time for the fans. Fade one draw step. <sighs> Fuck, that's bad. That's so fucking bad. Setting it is even, is even bad here. All right, we got to pass. That was tough. Man. Okay. If we get if we get uh if she just passes, I mean we win, but Here's Riza. Okay. Let's see if she attacks. She does. All right, we'll go to the next one. Yeah, that was close. Uh, we had some chances. We had some opportunities. They didn't really pan out so well for us, but now I know what's going on. So that's, that's what matters, really. What matters is I know what's going on. And I think we do want the well. Now that we know what's going on. I think we do want the well. Cyber Dragon. Icarus Attack. That return was not the best for us there. I mean, it gave us a shot at that game. We should have fucking won that game, man. I think I must have misplayed somewhere. 
It must have been the return turn. I didn't need to go for it. That was a bit aggressive, wasn't it? Hmm. I think we can cut Mirror Force. And bring in the Power Wall. And just do this. There are a lot of things I wanted to try out there, but I think... I think we know what we need to do in order to win. We have a very, very good start here in Stratos, Search, Mally, and then Set, Wind Blast. Next turn, we have big moves. We have big, big moves next turn. Pitch, Special, Swap, Send. Sure. Send Treeborn. Alright. They have to pitch Duprog again, so... Ideally, this is another Subzitoad moment. Ideally. I'd like to think that this is going to be another... Oh, is it Ryza? Shit, what is this? We're going to target the back row? Bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. Oh, and we picked up a rug. Jeez, it's so good. Okay. We go Kai Q. Hit for 18. Activate. Oh, she has fucking gores. Son of a bitch. Okay. So Rise is coming next turn. We have pulling for that. Gors is 18 token. Gors is going to clear our board. But we have Mally next turn. Provided we don't draw the Mally. We just need to not draw the Mally and then we're good. She should summon the Ryza here. Unless she has a better play to get Treeborn down. But she should summon the Ryza here. Oh, she's showing me she has Caius. So, so you're going to show me you have Caius. Interesting. She has to attack over the Kaiku. Yep. Okay. But now it's just, just bad. Right? That's really good. That's really, really good. So we'll Mally. Banish. Special summon Mally. Summon Krebins, I think. It's what is the what is the move? Is it Stardust Goyo? No, Stardust Goyo doesn't win. I think it's just Dark End. I think it's just Dark End. Um, she's thinking here. She could Wind Blast me here, which would suck ass, but. That's... Yeah, that would suck. Getting Wind Blasted here would be really bad. I think. She'd have to discard a Ryza. Actually, maybe it's not that bad at all. Maybe it's not that bad at all. Maybe I don't care. Maybe I just don't care. Straight up. Yeah. I think we just proceed as planned. We go Dark End... Blow up his dude, or her dude. Dark end, activate. Pop course. Oh, that was very easy. Why was I nervous? I'll just deal 39. Two turn clock. Uh, wait, 1800? If she has Wind Blast, she could stop the Dark End thing, but she'd have to pitch the Ryza. Okay. But that's fine. I mean, we have follow-up, so... I'm not worried. John's. Lol. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, the play's pretty clear. 
It's just Armageddon Knights and Krebins and then attack with everything per game. So, Arma Knight attack for 14, Stratos for that, and then Krebins for game. GG's. GG's. Cool. Nice. Did, did I have well? Last turn? Yes. I did. I had it all. I had it all. Even if you win Blast Krebins, you kill one and I reversal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. GG's. Next up, I gotta play against 10FD. Previous winner. Previous RBET first place duelist. This is gonna be tough. I gotta decide on what deck I'm gonna bring against him. This is gonna be a tough one. This is not a game I'm looking forward to playing. Especially if he's playing Bayou, which is the deck he normally plays. The last time we played, he was playing Machina, I think, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, I think we're we're not looking too hot with this deck. Well, maybe this deck's good enough against Bayou. I need to pick a deck, though. I need to pick a deck. I just need to pick something. Hmm. I think we're going to go with the deck I played in the members only video. No, nah, that deck isn't very good. Here, it's not good enough. I want to play that deck though. It just sounds fun. I think what I want to bring is fairy. Sounds accurate. Hmm. Or is it is it what I want to play? Sure, fuck it. Why not? Fuck it, why not? Let's run it. Let's see if this deck can hang with whatever he's bringing. Unless he's not here. Where is he? Is he ready? Hmm. 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 Looks like he's grabbing a snack real quick. Okay. Hold. Hold, everyone. Maybe we uh, reflect. We reflect upon our options here. I could bring the deck I've been planning on bringing to Deck Devastators, which is Dragons. I'm planning on bringing this deck. This exact list, actually. But, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If we're metagaming, then this isn't the list, right? But this is a list, you know? This is a list. But it isn't THE list, you know? If we're metagaming. It all depends on if we're metagaming or whatnot. Hmm. I haven't been super impressed with Book of Moon here. Actually, it was pretty good in the Ancient Gear match. Maybe I just bring Ancient Gears again. I might bring Ancient Gear to the fucking tournament. This deck's pretty good. Kind of just does what you need it to do. Kind of just does the thing. Ooh, maybe I bring Machina Gadget. Nah, that deck's cringe. Maybe I bring Quick Draw. Dude, I have, I have indecisions. I have issues making decisions. Oh man. Maybe I bring Flamvel for uh fucking what's his name? Oh, I could bring Lightsworn. Just get lucky. Oh, you know what? I could beat him with insects. That'd be kind of funny. How does this stuff work? Can 
Can this miss timing? Yeah, it can. Ew, I don't like that. I don't like the sound of that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure what we're bringing. I'm not sure what we're bringing. What are we bringing? What are we bringing? Man, you guys are getting to see my my indecision process here like crazy. Relinquished frogs? Huh. This sounds kind of fun. Remove brain? Is it time to remove my brain? Yes, this is what we're bringing. Why is there a stealth bird in the sideboard? What am I thinking? Am I, am I crazy for this one? This isn't the right remove brainwashing deck. Hold up. Is this the right? No, I, I think I have a better list. I think I have an owner seal list. Hold up. This is the list I have been playing. Yeah, this list looks better. This list looks better. This is the list I have been playing with the Fusiliers and the viruses. Okay, we're gonna try this list out. I think this is gonna be fun. We're gonna test him. We're gonna test him here. And I'm gonna pick Rock again. I mean, I picked Rock three times and it hasn't let me down yet. It hasn't let me down yet. God damn it. Okay. But that's okay, this deck does fine going second. Lava Golem is good. Volcanic Queen is good. Looks like we have some combos. Looks like we have some plays. Pretty excited about this. Once per turn. During a phase, tribute one other monster or take 1,000 damage. Hmm. 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 Big think from the opponent here. Our hand is... It needs one more piece. I think a grinder golem would really push this hand over the top. At least that's what I think. Allure of Darkness. <laughs> Gotta talk that shit. <laughs> Passive aggressive. That's funny. I like that. I'm going to say that to my opponents. That's funny. That's big funny. That's big funny. <laughs> Said some monster. Okay. What did he mean by this? We're going to take his monster out of play. That's what we're going to do. Tribute. We tribute his set monster, special summon Volcanic Queen. Then in the draw phase, we're going to remove Brainwashing. And that's going to be the plan. So we set Starlight, set remove Brainwashing, pass the turn, and can draw. He's got M phase Typhoon. What's he got? We're going to remove brainwashing now, though. Just get the Volcanic Queen back. Cool. This should be fun. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. No. I have heat. Maybe I should have told him nothing. Too kind. Too kind. I'm like the guy from Hunter x Hunter when he's training fucking Gone and Kiwa. He's like teaching him how to play while he's fighting him. Keck. Another back row. Who cares? We have Road. We're big protected. We've got a big Beast King coming. We can also launch uh, the Remove Brainwashing at any point to deal a thousand. 
Another set monster is interesting. We're just going to go summon Beast King and start attacking. I don't think it really matters all that much. Vulcan Queen is good. Deep Prison is on my radar, but who cares? We attack. The game must go on. Yep. 2500 direct. This must be where the deep prison happens. No. Hmm. That is interesting. Hmm. So if he has heavy storm royal oppression, he can break up our setup. I think what we want to do is we want to set the owner seal because if he if he set like let's say maybe he has just typhoon either way if he has just typhoon I'd rather him typhoon the owner seal in the end phase then end phase we've got to activate this and we're gonna take a thousand and we'll pass the turn okay um, looks like he's thinking in the end phase as well which is understandable. Does Tornado in the main? Yep. I knew I would bait it. Okay, cool. That's good. That's good. And we protected our Starlight, which is important. Cool, cool, cool. Opening hand? A little bit weak with the Fusilier. I wish we had like a virus or something to go with this guy. This is unfortunately going to be okay, and if he has Caius, we're unfortunately going to lose everything. He banished Caius off Allure, so there's a good chance he has a second. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Big thing from the opponent. They can attack over the Barbaros now. Hmm. If they have Gale, they can get over the Queen. I'm just trying to think of, like, what... It is they're trying to do. Next turn, I might just Cyber Valley draw two. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. If they just set a monster, like if they just attack over the Barbaros, I might go Vulcan attack over the Armed Wing and then... Oh, no, they have Caius. Okay, that's pretty bad. No. Okay, that's pretty bad. I mean, I knew they had it. They have to target... They're not going to target Volcanic Queen. Shit, I... <laughs> That means that their back row outs Volcanic Queen. Or they have this. Okay. That's pretty good, too. That's pretty good. If they don't return the Caius, that means they have Dark Armed. If they do return the Caius, that means they don't have Dark Armed. Do they have Burial Dark Arms in the top 10? Yeah, all right. We can go to the next game. That was... um. That was great. <laughs> that was awesome. This deck should be a good matchup for us, though. As long as we come prepared. We have the items. It's just a matter of... Yeah. Okay. Cyber Valley, probably not very good here. Probably a little too slow for this matchup. Fusilier, probably decent, but, like, Skill Drain isn't... Well, Skill Drain's actually pretty good in this matchup. Can I Thunder King negate Lava Golem? Yeah, uh, yes, I think you should be able to. I need to double check. I want him to know this ruling, because if he is able to, then that's good for us. Because he'll be boarding in 1900 normal summons, which are terrible against our deck. Lava Golem. This card only special summons. Does not start a chain. Yeah, so it is, um, okay. It can be negated. Cool. Hmm. Do we want Heavy Storm in this matchup? That's another thing. I think we kind of need it for Royal Oppression. It's either that or we bring in the Dust Tornadoes or we bring in the Scrap Iron. I don't love skill drain in this matchup, but I think it's kind of necessary. I think we go out Chalice, out Erad, out 
a couple of fusiliers. Man, is this right? Fusilier's kind of our threat, though. And Eradicator's kind of like our heavy storm. Oh, this is so tough. We're going first. He's gonna have, like, dust tornadoes and shit. Main deck dust tornadoes pre as fuck. That's the annoying shit. But... Hmm. Yeah, main deck dust tornado is very pre. There's only so much we can do about it. There's only so much we can do. Beast King might be the weakest link, actually. So we'll cut one Beast King. Actually, yeah, we'll cut one Beast King. I think we cut the Chalice. Maybe even one Fusilier. We're kind of threat light. It's kind of an issue. Maybe it's upstarts. We can cut the upstarts and maybe like play a more grindy game. I don't know if Heavy Storm is better than Dust Tornado or if Dust Tornado is better than Heavy Storm. And I don't know if Cyber Dragon's good or not. Might be. This looks to be the best configuration in my opinion. Well, maybe it's not, but who fucking knows. I like Scrap Iron Scarecrow in this matchup because it means they have to commit more to punish me and then I can lava goal them, them or whatever. More or less. It also kind of like is interesting in the way it demands certain attention. Oh, I should have cited out Solemn. Oversight on my part. Oversight. Okay. Okay. So the play is normal Barbaros. Set Mirror Force. Set Eradicator, set Solemn, and pass. If he has Heavy Storm, he won't play it because he saw Starlight Road last game. If he has Sirocco, he'll lead on that and we Mirror Force it. We might not Mirror Force it, I'm not sure. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, he might not play into Starlight because he saw it last game. That's what I'm thinking. If this was Fusilier, it'd be better. Here's Armageddon Knight. That's okay. We run over that with Barbaros, so... I'm cool with this being their threat of choice. Um, If they send Plague, how do I feel about that? It's probably fine. We kind of just let everything happen if they do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the wave. We kind of just let everything happen. If they send plague and if they make Bryonic, I'll just let them like bounce my whole board. They're gonna send plague, cool. They're gonna set a back row. They're gonna attack. No attack. Pass, okay. DD Crow, that's a good draw. So at this moment in time, we could attack this shit. Hmm. I think we should. Yep. There's 500. Then we'll pass. His set card is probably Heavy Storm. And we will be forced to Solemn that if it does come up. Which won't feel good, I will say. But, alas. Left that in. Mayo. That's funny. He said, hell yeah, I did. That's funny. Here comes Caius. Yes, we will negate the summon. Then the set card is Heavy Storm and he flips it. He might solemn him back here. No. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll set that, and the long game begins. I think I should have played the list with triple scrap iron. That list looks a little bit better, actually, because I can play the control game a lot better. If one of his sets is heavy, he can flip it, but it's fine. 
Interesting. Hmm. He might have a solemn judgment down too. Because he thought on our solemn. Oh, that's ugly. We need Grinder Golem. That's who we need. That's the hero. There's Thunder King. I'm going to Mirror Force this Thunder King. I don't really want to deal with it. I just want time. He could Solemn it, which wouldn't be the worst play. He could also book the Thunder King. Nightmare Archfiends. That at least gives us a threat. Hmm. Yeah, that does give us a threat. But is it a threat we want to play right now? It might be a threat we have to play right now. Alright. This Eradicator is punishing us. I should have cited it out. I definitely should have cited it out. If I draw Fusilier, I'll be happy. But if I don't draw Fusilier, then... This is a mistake. Grinder Golem also would be good. His life points is bugged. 3200 to 6700. He's got two cards in hand. He is representing a lot. Okay. I think we go for a play now. I think we set the crow. And then we go... Nightmare Archfiends. Okay. Okay. If he has Royal Oppression, I mean, we're just fucked. I'll go ahead and summon the appropriate tokens. These little guys. He's saying, think on summons. He could Torrential here. All right, now we have to Lava Golem. Oh no, we can't Lava Golem because we normal set DD Crow. So we're gonna remove brainwashing. We need tokens. No. Okay. Cool. Or we'll owner seal. Okay, value and attack. Awesome. All right. Uh, position's not great, but it's not bad either. We have Crow, so. Well, you die on the spot to Mirror Force, but I don't think he plays it. I think he just plays Deep Prison, if I remember correctly. Takes 1,200. Takes another 4,000. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, we don't have any plays, so we got to pass. I mean, that's just where we're at. Because we're just fucking boned. Dark Refer kills us. Um, Armageddon Knight's pretty bad. Anything that gives him a second graveyard threat is pretty bad. Dark Armed, obviously, we lose on the spot. Um... A lot of stuff could go wrong. A lot of stuff could go wrong. Uh, hopefully he just has a bunch of dead shit. And he just dies to the tokens. I mean, like, hopefully that's just the case. Set monster pass. Set back row pass. Okay. This is playable. He has to have Ryko plus D-Prison to survive. 
think. Rico pop back row, okay. L3. Okay. Uh, attack directly. Do you have an air force? D prison? Oh, he has double prison, okay. In the case of double prison, nah, fuck it, we, we ball. Fuck it, we ball. Cool. All right, sick. <sighs> Fade one more turn. Fade one more turn. Fade one more turn. That's all we need. If he draws Sirocco, it's bad. Um, if he draws a lot of stuff. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't think they're destroyed. Yeah, I assume it's not the case. If I can check. I don't think that's the case. I've never heard that before. If it is the case, go ahead and look it up. Remove brainwashing. Nah, just when they're destroyed. Yeah, just when they're destroyed. 3200, yeah. He could go, like, plague, stack. Cost. Think. Think harder. Target plague. Yeah. Target this L. <laughs> Get fucked. Okay, cool. Damn, that was crazy. Damn, doc, that was crazy. Okay. Now what? Now what do we do? It said second oppression coming in. I... <laughs> I mean, we have stuff. I think Lava Golem gets worse. That's the only one that's like kind of whatever. Also, Eradicator is harder to resolve th without the upstarts because we don't see our targets as often. We do see them, but just not as often. Hmm. It might have to be skill drain. Yeah, it might have to be one skill drain. And then we bring in like storm or something. This looks like it could be terrible, but it could also just cheese. Oh, it's a mess. It's a fucking mess. This deck is a fucking mess. Let's be real. I know I'm going to lose to like a fucking random Sirocco when I have like D Fissure fucking Starlight Road shit going on. I'm just going to lose to like a Thunder King attacking me. I can already tell. Uh, this is, this is okay. I need a combo piece, but it's okay. Okay, set monster set back row is fine, I suppose. There's my combo piece. All right. Well, sack his dude. All right. Now we own our seal. Take the queen. Oh, you know what we could have done? Gimme. You thumbs up. Thumbs up. You gave thumbs up. You could have, but you gave thumbs up.
Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Nah, if you give thumbs up, I mean, the card's good. Yeah. We're gonna set just the drain, I think. Don't need the arch fiends quite yet. Just the drain. Yeah, just the drain. It should be pretty hard. Oh, uh, we have to take a thousand. I mean, I'm at seven thousand in case it's still bugged. You are at fifty-five hundred. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Do I have crow? Yes. He trusts. He trusts. <laughs> I, he trusts. <laughs> he trusts. What can I say? The man, he trusts. He trusts. He trusts. Okay. He says he has Armageddon Knight, but let's play combo. Yeah, all right. Um. <laughs> I know his back row. That's illegal. Yeah. 2,800. And then we pass. You are at 2700. I am at 6000. Cool. He has to banish it dark. One of the ways he gets back is Sirocco Gale. That will give him Colossal Fighter. Otherwise, he needs trap cards to get back into this, which, you know, fair enough. Says he forgot to side out BrainCon again. Whoops. Might be okay here. Brain control. Take the Fusilier. Fire Honest. Lol. We take 300. And then he's going to sack for... Caius. Sirocco. Sack for Sirocco. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Not a great draw. Not a great draw. All right, we can set Fusilier. We know he has Bottomless, so we can just set this and then chill. He can't really do anything about it. And I'll set the Archfiends too. And then we'll pass. Mm. Yeah. Dude, he drew Gale. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow, good draw. That's crazy. You have 1900, I have 5700. That's a crazy draw. Dang, he actually drew really well out of the situation. Very lucky for him. There are a million cards here that he draws where he just fucking loses. Gale is like the one card he could draw to press through this actual situation. That's fucking crazy. That's impressive that he drew Stardust here. That's or not Stardust, uh, Drew Gale. That was literally the one card. Damn. I think we fucking lose. Straight up. I mean, we have to play like an idiot. Set, remove, brainwashing. Uh, I'm just going to get some grinder golem tokens. And we die if he if he has a typhoon. Like we straight up die if he has a typhoon. There's nothing we can do. But. We just have to play the game the way it's the way it's playing. Yeah, 
He's gonna bottomless. Uh, shit. Uh, that's fine, yeah. Um. Okay. Well. Doesn't look great. But. Maybe we can make something happen. Maybe we can make something happen. He should know that the new back rows remove brainwashing. He should know that because like we don't really have a play. We're going to lose one of our tokens no matter what. So we might as well just take the hit here. If we draw Volcanic Queen, we can at least try to OTK. Lava Golem works. Lava Golem works. So we Nightmare Archfiends, sack our token. He should get the tokens here. He might oppression this. If he has oppression, he should have oppression the Golem. But he might oppression this if he has it. Uh, yes. You will lost. Okay. Thumbs up. Summon okay. Okay. Golem, Stardust, Token. It's going to tribute no matter what. That doesn't target. Yeah. Okay. We're going to see if he has Dust Tornado or Typhoon. You know, hopefully he doesn't. GG's. GG's. Uh, was close. Needed you to fade Gale one turn. Yeah. Oh, that was close. That was a good one. In any case, we're going to catch the last game, which is going to be 10FD versus, uh, versus Murray. I got to report the L. Damn, that was tough. I almost had it. That was a close one. That was indeed a close one. Hmm. I wonder if there was another way around that. I think I could have played the owner seal a little differently early on. I didn't think I needed to get so aggressive, basically, with it in hindsight. Although, I don't know. In hindsight, he should have just bottomless the Volcanic Queen, and then I would have held the Owner Seal longer. So his mistake ended up giving him some sort of something there, if that's the case. Hmm. Something to think about, for sure. I, I definitely need to reflect on that match, because I think I had a shot in that game, in that last game. I was definitely... Definitely a game where I could have gotten a win somewhere. A lot of interesting ruling stuff. A lot of interesting stuff happening there, gameplay-wise. I think, I think I could have had it. I need to revisit this build. I think the build is a little off, too. The skill drain stuff is cool, but I don't know how consistent it is. I don't know if it's more consistent than playing like the stall burn strat. That's something I'm thinking about. There's more of the stall stall burn. Murray, where let's go. Avenge me, Murray. That was good though. 
That was good. Two one in an Iron Man. I'll take it. I'll take it. These are some good players. These are some good players for sure. Dang, man. Dang. Dang. Good players for sure. That was a tough one. Tough L. Let's see what Murray brings to the table. Let's see what he's got. We're on Murray's side here. He's on our team. We're hoping for him to take it down. I managed to get the first two wins for our team. Let's see if Murray can, can get the third. Let's see if Murray can get the third. Okay. Murray going second. Not what we like to see, but Murray's a fan of the Gladiator Beast. Maybe he has a Tiger Tiger Prisma combo to pull him back from going second. A lot of stuff he could have that could pull him back into the game going second. He plays good decks. That's one thing I'll say about Murray is he doesn't play bad decks. So if he pulls up with a good deck, then, then that's all we really need, right? That's all we could ask for. If there's a Laquari here, that'd be great. Man. I think the trap cards in this format are a little bit too good. They're a little bit too much for, like, your average aggro deck to overcome. You need, like, Caius's to play through back row. I'm, like, noticing this. It's really hard to play through just, like, anything plus, like, deep prison bottomless if you don't have heavy or if you don't have, like, Caius's. There's not a lot of cards that play super effectively into back row in this format. I'm noticing, I'm noticing a trend. Like, you need value cards. Like, the telekinetic deck, the reason it's so good is because Krebins can just, like, attack into Rikos, attack into back row, and it's fine. Because if they die, then you get to weld them back. And if they trade one for one with, like, D-Prison, then you preserve your real threats, which is, like, the synchro monsters later on. That's why I think that deck is so good, because it plays into back row so effectively. Okay, it looks like we're going to have a mirror match... That'd be interesting. That'd be really interesting. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Hmm. Dang, that Gale draw. That was tilting. If he drew anything but Gale, I think we win that match. I guess Caius is annoying because it can attack over Fusilier. But... Gale's the only thing that actually, like, gets him there with, like, setting up a Stardust to protect his other shit and, like, threatens us beyond that, I suppose. Nah, Caius is probably annoying, too. It's probably, like, Gale and Caius are annoying. I could see that being a bad top deck for us. As it stands, if he had just attacked into the set card with Sirocco, man, we would have fucking crushed him. He had fucking solemn double bottomless, and then we would add a 2800 in play. It's probably best for him not to attack, and he probably realized that, but at least we have a stalemate and we have time. And if he commits another monster, like, ever, then we sack for Lava Golem. Or whatever. I guess we didn't draw the Lava Golem until later. Yeah. I need to revisit this deck. I think it's good. I just need to figure out how to fully utilize it. The Remove Brainwashing deck. Okay, Armageddon Knights. Not really doing much. D prison, pretty good here. Pretty good. Maybe I shouldn't have told him I had Crow. <laughs> he would have gone for the Armageddon Knight combo. That's pretty funny. Okay, stack for Plague. I don't like this. I think this is quite bad. Well, this is quite a bad move. There's five back row though, so... Probably not getting any better. I don't know. But are you really going to synchro at minus one into these back row? Like, is that really something you intend on doing? Murray's going to lose this game just because he doesn't have creatures. Like, you didn't have to stack for plague here. I, I don't think that that was ever going to be... I think you just saved the plague. Uh, maybe I'm capping. I don't fucking know. I don't see the point in stacking for plague here. I feel like that's just a mistake. You're just going minus one into any back row. And he, that's what he has, is he has five back row. Yeah, this is such a weird move. I don't... I don't get this. I don't get this play. It's so strange. I wonder if he, like, wanted to bait an impression or something. If he baits an impression, then... I don't know. Yeah, maybe he was just trying to bait oppression. I could see that. 
Yeah, Murray's just going to lose because he doesn't have creatures. That's the unfortunate part of this. You need creatures in order to play this game. Trap cards won't do it alone. Here comes the Goyo with solemn backup. The back row is absolutely solemn. This could eat a Royal Oppression. Oh no. He's just going to go for that to bait the bottomless. And then Greffer, pitch, Vayu, send nothing. He's not going to pitch anything. He's just going to swing. Huh. I don't know about all that. I feel like that was kind of a weird sequence. Because now 10FD is like behind in cards. It's kind of a weird sequence from him. I guess he's just thinking that the plague's never getting any better. It's not like a wrong sequence. It's just, why wouldn't you Armageddon Knight send like Soroko or send Vayu if you had Greffer and you had a follow-up Armageddon Knight? Like why, why are you sending Plague then? I guess in the dark, Plague is good to have in the grave, but not even really, especially because you know Murray plays Gladiator Beast a lot. So, I don't know. It's not really going to be much of a match because like I said, Murray doesn't have creatures. Here's his first creature. Uh, but this is going to get fucking owned. Like, this is going to get fucking owned, more or less. If 10FD has Solemn, he should gun it here. At least I would, if I had Solemn. Because you got to play around Icarus. It's going to be a tough game. Hopefully Murray can take it. Hmm. Maybe I should have brought Ancient Gear. I don't know. If he drew the way he drew that game against Ancient Gear, it would have been even worse. Because he had double bottomless. That card's so good against Ancient Gear. Bug. No response to summon. Think on attack declaration. Does he have a second D prison? I know 10FD plays triple D prison. So it's like... It's like... Yeah. It's gotta be there, right? Is this going to be the Icarus? And is that going to be the Typhoon? He set the new card. Wow, it was the Oppression. Big advantage for Murray now. Murray comfortably sitting at plus two. Not really under a ton of pressure. Can't really get Sirocco reversal. Oh, never mind. Looks like 10FD has drawn multiple Greffers. He has not wanted to discard anything, though. So maybe he just hasn't had... Mirror Force getting played to keep the life total high. I actually really like that play from Murray. I really like that. You want to keep your life total high. Because one of the ways you lose in this game is normal summon Sirocco, big pump attack. So you need to be careful about your life total. Plus, Greffer is going to be a threat later on if you let it stick. And it looks like Murray doesn't have a great way to remove it, so... He's going to be attacking with his hand traps, the Kalutes, but, you know, that works. Does he have a good answer to this Raikou? That's the real question. Heh. What the fuck is this? God. What the fuck is this, man? Oh, that's the Tech Spirit Reaper. Okay. It's a pretty bad Descendant. Looks like Murray is playing Spy Wings. This was a deck that was actually popular in 2010. It's basically Black Wings, but with Gravekeeper Spy for the mirror match. The only thing I fucking hate about this match, or this list, is that it has a Descendant in it. Back in 2010, people didn't play Descendant. They played Double Spy, or they played Double Spy, One Guard. They never, they didn't even play the full three Spy, if I remember correctly, because it made your deck too normal summon heavy. They definitely never played Descendant, because that card is dog shit terrible. Yeah, I don't remember them ever playing that card. Guard is so much better in this meta, too. Like, when... What? Drawing guard is actually, like, kind of good. Low-key, like, against Black Wings, it's, like, actually kind of good. Against Vayu, it's actually kind of good. Whereas, like, drawing Descendant is never good. Card is just so, so, so bad. Murray needs a Bora here. Or a Spy. A Spy would be good. But he just needs something. That's got to be the Spy. He's getting a little greedy setting it. If 10FD has a Royal Oppression, he can set it and then 
big punish. Or if 10FD has a Caius, it's really bad for Murray. It's like really bad. Although Murray did set five early on, so it's pretty likely he has Solemn. If if you're thinking about things that way, it's pretty likely he has Solemn, so maybe it's okay to go for the greedy play. You just Solemn there out. Here comes Flip Spy. Yep. Activate. If 10FD has Royal Oppression, he should chain it here. But you guys are going to see why Gravekeepers are so good against Bayou Turbo now. You guys are going to see why this engine is so powerful. Even just the two spies. Like, this whole game, Murray's been up cards. But now it's just, like, getting getting more and more ahead. Like, he's going to have 10FD down to, like, zero cards here in a second. He's going to sack the Gravekeeper spy. Probably pop the Reaper first. No, he's just going to pop the back row. I'm shocked that he set the bottomless there. I, like, what? Why would you set bottomless there? You're just going to lose it to this descendant. I guess maybe he wants to bait it. Oh, man. That's really good. That's really, really good. Yeah, that's going to be the game. The only way he comes back is specifically brain control. And at this point, if you're Murray and you lose to brain control, you should dark armed pop your own dark armed. You should dark armed pop your own dark armed. Because if you lose to brain control, you should do that. And then you have three back row to stun any sort of other play. And then you just kill him because 900 is super low. If you lose to brain control, and it's pretty obvious he's been sandbagging brain control. Like, or he's the way he's played it's really like I have brain control. He hasn't played any of his other cards. What other card could he have in his hand? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It should be it should be dark arm pop your own dark arm if if yeah if you're if you're losing to brain control and if you're not losing to brain control then Jesus I don't know. But yeah, that was a big turn. Here comes Sirocco pump. This walks into all trap cards, but you don't really have a choice. Good special Gale here. Have the dark armed. Hmm. Yep, Sirocco pump. Attack the dark armed and pray. Don't really have much else you can do. You've already normaled. It's just not getting any better. Attacking Kalut. This plays around Icarus. Oh no, this is a bad play. This is a bad play, because now main phase two, he can brain dark armed. Yeah, he was baiting Icarus or baiting a book. The brain control was really obvious. Don't pass over the dark armed here. You were supposed to dark arm pop your own dark arm. Okay, he has Icarus. It's not great. What? Dude, what the fuck pop is that? Dark Arm still goes over to the other side of the field, right? Well, I guess he's popping the Sirocco. Um, he still gets Dark Armed, doesn't he? What? Did he not brain control target Dark Armed? What did he target with brain? What the fuck? What did he target with brain? He should still if he did he target the dark armed? Or did he target Kalut? What the fuck? Why would you not target dark armed? What the fuck am I watching? What is going on? I swear he targeted Dark Arm there, right? I need to DM him. I, I, they would catch it. I, I must have missed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's the Psalm. Okay, that's going to be the game. That's funny. Murray passed in the Psalm Judgment. Um, uh, he should take control of Dad. 
Why did he not? Yeah, what? Am I... Is my thing bugged? Oh, man. What the fuck? Yeah, why did he not get the dark arm there? What the fuck? Am I missing something? Am I missing something? What the fuck just happened? That was the craziest shit. What just fucking happened? Chet? Chet? Huh? Did he just say no? Did he just say you don't get the dark armed and just didn't pass it over? Like what? Did I miss something? What the fuck did I just watch? He brain controlled, targeted the dark armed. Murray went Icarus attack. Target the armed wing and the brain control. What? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? I gotta message him. Am I like this is like a fever dream? I, send message. What did you target with brain control? No, I need to be certain now. I need to be certain. What what did he target with brain control? What did he target with brain control there? What? They just both missed it? What the fuck? How did you both miss that? What the fuck am I- This guy won an RBET. This guy legit thought Icarus negates. What? This guy literally just got- Oh my god. This guy's so- These guys are fucking- What the fuck? What is going on? This guy won an RBET. This is the guy you guys are all- This guy I lost to. This is the motherfucker I lost to. This guy's a troll, dude. That's insane. That's insane. What the fuck? How, that's so bad. I'm so glad I'm recording this. You guys have to subscribe because that's the content. You can tell this is a late night. You can tell this is a late night. Oh my god. That is so... That's some late night iron shit. Oh my god. I hope Moray wins, but... After that, like... Bro just said brain control Ukazi myself past the turn. What the fuck? That was... He should have won that game. He just dark arm blows up the whole field. What the fuck? Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. Yepers. Here comes the dusty... You old dusty trail. That was... Shocking. That was shocking. That was really bad. That was really something. Okay, Raikou gonna pop, mill two Vayus. Well, this game's over. <laughs> as long as 10FD can find a Sirocco, he should be able to win this one. He just has too much gas. Unless... Unless, of course, Murray has, like, Kaiku or something. And it's like a crazy, like, spellcaster list that tries to make Arcanite or something. Damn, this is crazy. That was a crazy bad game that we just watched. That was a crazy bad game. I don't even understand how the fuck you fucked that up. Like, I have never seen anything like that. I, I, like, I understand, there's a lot of other mistakes I'll understand, like, I understand a lot of the mis mistakes that I've made, you know what I mean? Because the mistakes that I make are understandable, but the mistake that we just witnessed, what the fuck? That, that mistake gaslit me, like, that mistake was, it made me question what just happened. Dude, this is why you don't play Descendant, this is why you don't play Descendant, oh my god, this is, who DM'd me? How the fuck... That was... This is why you don't play... Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, at least it's killing the Armageddon Knight, but, like, come on. 
even Gravekeeper's Guard is better here because you just like you bounce something, you know. Although it is kind of ugly if you like fucking. Oh, DD Crow. Okay. Alrighty, that's that's a big crow. That's a big crow. I like that crow. I like that crow. Okay, this is the one time where Descendant is better than Guard because you wouldn't want to bounce the Armageddon Knight. 10FT says GG. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. But all that set up, all that set up to get kind of boned by one crow. Still ahead on cards though. 10FT is still ahead on cards. Like he lost one card, but imagine the Armageddon Knight traded with the DD Crow, basically. And then Descendant here... Wow, just a set back on pass. No monster for 10 FD. Think in draw phase. We can't dust you because there's three cards in hand. Unless he's that tired <laughs> and thinks he, he can. Thinks he, that there's four cards in hand. What a crazy game. I do like this spy stuff. I think it's cool. I, I think more decks should play spy moving forward. Like frog monarchs, but with spies. Sounds cool. No, I'm kidding. That sounds terrible. Maybe quick draw with spies, though. That'd be kind of cool. Quick draw with spies. What does that do for the deck? Not much. <laughs> Not much. Okay, Space Typhoon in the draw phase is heads up play. Wanting to play around a potential Icarus on his back row, maybe? I don't fucking know. Wanting to play around Heavy Storm. That's what it was. Yeah, he wanted to play around Heavy Storm, pro heavy. Okay. Another Normal Summon Kalut. This is the same board. This is the Murray Classic. Normal Summon Descendant, Normal Summon Kalut. That's embarrassing. I mean, this just gets blown the fuck out by Mirror Force, right? But we know 10FD doesn't play it, so here we are. Just kidding, he does! Damn, I almost played into this a million times in the last match. <laughs> Guess he does play Mirror Force. Shit, that was, uh... That was bad. <laughs> I don't know how to say it any other way. Just don't attack with Kalut. Why summon Kalut there, Murray? Why summon Kalut? Huh? Why are you doing this to us? I mean, you already got a freebie last game. Don't throw away the match for the freebie. Team Murray needs a dub. And by Team Murray, I mean me. I need the dub. I need the dub, bro. I need it. Wow. This has been a match. And by a, this has just been a bad game. This is... Okay. Dark Armed Raw? Alright. But you know Murray has Kalut in hand, because why would he summon the first Kalut if he didn't have a second one? So you know he has Kalut in hand. So you have to have a stop. You have to have an attack stop. And as long as Murray has... You know, if that's not an attack stop, then you're kind of fucked. Blizz doesn't work. Oh, he drew Heavy Storm. Nice. Right, he's going to play it. Trap Hole, an interesting side choice. Brain Control. Okay. That works. It outs the Dark Armed, but that's it. That's all it does. It doesn't really do anything other than that beyond that. He needs more. There's more. That's pretty good more. That's Android. Yeah, that's Android. You want to make Android because you need the life. But you also don't want to make Android here. Maybe you do, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Gonna be Android. Gonna be Android. Okay. Android and then 52 dark armed pop itself This time they're correctly resolving brain control I know I shouldn't have mentioned anything to them, but holy shit That was just Terrible they wouldn't have the crazy shit is they wouldn't have even realized it Unless I said something that's the crazy shit none of the, they were just like damn GG's you got me there damn GG's but what? They wouldn't have even. <laughs> also, this is why Dark Armed on an open board sucks, because you just get nothing out of it. But if 10FD has like a reversal play, like if he has a way to get the last points of damage, then it's probably fine. 
But there's no real reason to summon Dark Arm there, I don't think. Well, maybe, because you have Trap Hole, and you know he has potential Kalut, because he summoned the first Kalut. But then you didn't realize it was actually Blizzy, it was actually Brain Blizzy. Okay, no, I get it, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. I'm pretty surprised that Murray didn't summon the Blizzard on the last turn, then. I guess he was just getting Max Greedy. Max Greedy. Yeah, that should be the game. If he has any monster, it's game. Caius is game. No, Caius is not game. It's uh, 200 short. Hmm. What the fuck is this? I guess he wants to end with the 2400 monster. I think that's... Sus. Yeah. Punished. Punished. I guess brain control's gone, but... Not a great spot to be in. Top decking against Black Wings, but Black Wings is also top decking. I mean, this is how this matchup, like, devolves. Your cards trade off, and then you get low life points, and then whoever has the, the last threat wins. We do know that he's on D-Prisons, and we've only seen one. So is that a D-Prison? If he takes this damage, collude his game. Yeah, there's a D-Prison, okay. There's a back row, interesting. Passes the turn, not a normal summonable monster with 1200 or more attack. Let's see if Murray's able to find game here. Is there a Shura? No, it's just a pass. What are you drawing and passing with here if you're Murray? Dark Arms? It's really the only thing. Ooh, Blizzy's good. Blizzy's good. That's really fucking good because it's offense and it's defense. We'll see if there's a DD Crow here. He's going to target the Kalut. There's only one target. It's just Kalut. Yeah. Okay. But now he's he's insulated a little bit. But if 10FD has a Sirocco in his hand, now he can summon it. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit all over the place. Trap hole hitting the Blizzy. Big think moment from Murray. Maybe he's just lagging. Okay. Interesting. Pass the turn. Sirogo getting normal summoned here. Yep. There it is. Okay. That's going to attack the Kalut. Icarus isn't live. Deep Prison would be crushing here. Deep Prison would be heartbreaker. But you got to play into it. Yeah, there it is. There's a D prison. Now you just switch the Kalut. If you have your own Kalut, which you've been representing the whole game, you just have game. Not the whole game, but... Huh? Sack for Sirocco. Sack for Sidra. Ooh. Solemn. Damn, if only he had attacked. I don't know if I like Sack for Sidra. You've already seen Mirror Force and D prison gone. And you haven't seen any... You've seen two D prisons gone. You haven't even seen a single bottomless. So, I think you just attack with Kalut. They attack back over Kalut, and then you special side run, you win. And if they don't kill the Kalut, then you win. I actually think that was a, a choke. Like a colossal choke from Murray. Hmm. He saw red, but it was not a good play. It was not a good play at all. Damn. Now he's going to lose because of it. Last turn he could have attacked the set with Kalut. Man. That's crazy. Two D prisons gone. No bottomless gone. No anything else gone. Both Sirocos are banished. So, But I think 10FD plays three Siroko. I think he's a three Siroko believer. Interesting. Two Rikos are gone. Set has a 50-50 shot of being a hamster. If it was a hamster, I think you just risk it and attack last turn to put him on a two-turn clock. You give him one top deck to find a monster. That's what I would have done. So I think it's a Ryko. 
I think it's a Raikou. If it was Hamster, it would have attacked last turn. Mm. Whatever he needs to do, he needs to play the fucking game. Because I'm getting hungry. I'm trying to go get some dinner, bro. I'm trying to go get some dinner. This has been a good video. This has been a really fucking quality video. Two and a half hours of Edison content. Y'all y'all are lucky. Y'all are fortunate today. I, I'm I'm gracing your presence. Yeah, he should have attacked this last turn. I think this was a an error. You just give him an extra turn, right? Like no reason really to give him the extra turn. Give him the extra top deck. Well, there's that. Let's see if he top decked the mirror force. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so this whole thing, like I said, pretty bad. He should have uh, he should have attacked with the hamster last turn. Then he forces the mirror with just uh, just value this turn or whatever. Don't play the allure, bro. What are you doing? You don't need to play the allure here. What are you trying to draw? Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Never mind, Murray's goaded, actually, he's goaded. I never doubted him for a second. When that brain control never resolved game one, never doubted him for a second. Team Murray, let's fucking go, baby. That was a crazy Iron Man. That was a crazy Iron Man. That, let's fucking go. That was so sick. I knew my team would pull through. I love winning Iron Mans. I love Iron Mans in general. It's my favorite way to play this format. If you guys want to play Iron Mans like this one, Join the Format Library Discord in the description below. Join the EdisonFormat.com description below. And come play some fucking Iron Mans with your boy. See you guys in the next vid. Peace.